Hello, and welcome back to episode 23 of Anime on Draft. I'm your host, Rolando, joined by my beautiful co-hosts, Drew. Kawaii, ne? And Alec. Hello. Yeah, you uh, you do that every time. You're not, Alec. You're not you, even gonna. You're not even gonna. You're not. You're not even. It. Not even to what? do anything. You you do the same. You, hello, you heard every my. Week. <laughs> hello you didn't hear there, my beautiful. <laughs> oh, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. <laughs> there, all right, <laughs> all right, Mickey. All right, Mickey Mouse. Ugu, um, ugu, ugu. Um, all right, continuing on. Uh, this week. <laughs> Uh, since Drew is still not drinking because he's got to yeah, like, build up that beautiful <clears throat> beach bod for his cruise. Um, I'm like, I'm like two years old. I have a really bad sunburn. Like, let's fucking do this. <laughs> yeah. He, he I can't threw even, out my he is back. The, he is the, apparently the metabolism of a 90 year old man. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yep. Alec and I have decided we're going to do whiskey this week. Yes. And, uh, this week we've got what, Alec? You chose it. Seventeen ninety two is the whiskey. It's a a bourbon whiskey, and we are doing that, it straight um, on the rocks and as an old fashioned. Is what? that the year that Columbus sailed the ocean blue? No, no, I think you're, you're about a few hundred years, years off. off. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was just going to say, if he, if he sailed the oceans after the Declaration of Independence and the, you know, the whole yeah. American Revolution, yeah. then, man, he was sure late. <laughs> um, yeah. No, what happened is he Got actually it. found India. He actually found India. Oh, yeah. And then way later, he's still somehow alive. He he came over here. He's an alien, okay? Yeah, he still brought smallpox oh, to the Native Americans. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Damn. <coughs> Anyways, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, history. Why don't we uh, talk about this uh, this bourbon we've got? So uh, I've got my glass of it straight right now. Okay, um, let's start with that then. It is supposed to be on the rocks, but I poured a small amount just for a taster. That it's it's just neat for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, why don't we take our first sips? You're neat. Oh, thanks. While they uh, while they sip that, I've actually had this uh, before, so I can kind of comment on it. I can't comment directly on drinking it as of this point, but I have had it before. <laughs> it's good. It's good stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so I have mine <clears throat> on the rocks. Uh, the color changes for sure because when it's in the bottle, it's like that, you know, typical amber whiskey color when you get it on the rocks it kind of go changes to a, a yellower amberish color and it looks more like uh scotch than it does look like bourbon mm-hmm. when it's Once in the bottle it kind of looks more it. like like a dark caramel mm-hmm. yeah yeah burnt but, amber if you will are you trying not, to like yeah. talk about crayon colors or <laughs> yeah yeah burnt, burnt sienna amber. i'm bob ross now bitch <laughs> I'm going to beat the devil out of you. <laughs> That's the best part. Um, <laughs> that is. Uh, anyways, Alec, what do you think about the the overall like notes that hit your nose, uh, the taste? Um, I think it is like you get, when you smell it, it's like got sweet, citrusy, I guess. Kind of like sweet and spicy. <laughs> um, but that's all I get, really. Yeah. I may have let it dilute too long. I get it because but. mine's neat. It smells very um, ethanol. Oh, uh huh. <laughs> so yeah, it's very it's burning my my nose. Your nose. <laughs> but I do get the <laughs> the sweet smell you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that. And I remember it, it, might it be easier be... for me because it's watered down. Mm. I remember it being pretty smoky. Is is that true, or am I just crazy? Like the flavor or the smell? Yeah, the flavor. The flavor. Uh, the the flavor is, it's kind of like, it is woody, I would say. So maybe like yeah. that's kind of mm. s- smoky. Um, like you can, else? you can taste the, like, you know, it's a bourbon just from the taste. Cause like it's got mm-hmm. that barrel aged, um, kind of finish to it that mm-hmm. you, you get right off the bat. Like you taste the wood. 
Well, I mean, you don't <clears> taste right, wood. Right. You don't. It doesn't taste like wood, but like you get what I mean. Like you taste like yeah, the, yeah, the wood. Yeah, it's like I get the smoky, caramel flavor that you kind of expect from bourbon, um, for sure. Uh, it's very easy to drink. Like mm-hmm. it's surpri- Like it's not a very expensive bourbon. No, but not at all. If you had your picks, this is one I would highly recommend because it. If you're not a big bourbon drinker <clears throat> or whiskey in general, it may be hard to you know drink it either sh- um, straight on the rocks or neat, just because like bourbons and. Other whiskeys tend to be kind of, I guess, imposing. Pungent. I don't know. Yeah, they're like more pungent. They're pungent. <laughs> it's not like uh, you know, like an expensive bottle of scotch where like you can really savor it. A lot of times, you got to water these down a bit, um, especially because they're a bit cheaper. Um, but also aged for less time. Yes, for <clears throat> sure. Mm-hmm. But it for, like this whiskey, this bourbon in particular. I really like because it's it's not um, expensive, but it doesn't taste like it like it's super cheap, especially if you like throw a splash of water in there. Mm hmm. Yeah. It, you get a lot of like flavors that are like, you know, y- you don't it's, when you get really cheap whiskey, you expect it just to taste like rubbing alcohol. Yeah. <clears throat> and this is cheaper, but it doesn't taste like rubbing alcohol. Never do I drink it thinking, man, that was a really like obnoxious alcohol flavor right there. It, right. it re- never really has that even while neat, which is normally when you're going to get it more than other times. Um, and so it's nice. Cause I think it's what? $36, $38, something like that. Yes. Maybe, maybe that like 35. Right. It's not bad at all. Like the price yeah. is <clears throat> is a good spot. Um, it's like a thirty so. to forty dollar range bourbon, and you can go cheaper and get something like Elijah Craig or Four Roses. But mm-hmm. in my opinion, like while I do really like Elijah Craig, and to some extent like Four Roses for you know cocktails, um, mm-hmm. this has supplanted Elijah Craig in terms of that um, price range for bourbon for me. Oh, yeah, me too. If I go to the store and I'm like, I just want like a 30 something dollar bottle of bourbon, I'm going to get 792, 17.92 every time. Oh, getting a century every off time. of us. Yeah, 792. That's <laughs> the year I go for. 14.92. <laughs> yeah, well, there Did you they, go. Yeah, you remember it now. <laughs> they just don't make it. They don't make whiskey like they used to in the 700s. Dude. <laughs> yeah. It's just not the same. It's not anymore. the same. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, well, yeah. uh, let's get our quick impressions of, oops, uh, there goes my coaster of the, uh, it's gone old fashioned. Yeah. Give me one second. I got to switch things around. He go. Okay. So I just took a sip and it's definitely very good in an old fashioned Um, mine, I don't have an orange peel, unfortunately, but neither do I, um, that's just because I forgot to get one from the store. Um, not an orange peel, but obviously an orange. (laughs) Just the peel. Yeah. Let me just buy the peel, please. Excuse Uh, me. Can I just take the peel off this orange and leave it here and I'll just grow back, right? (laughs) (laughs) It's like a sponge, right? It just grows appendages, but it's for sure. Like. It's already drinkable, like, on the rocks or neat with a splash of water. But in an old-fashioned, it's just even smoother, I would Mm -hmm. say. Yeah, it's really smooth in an old-fashioned. I've never had this in an old-fashioned before. Yeah, same here. Um, I just always use... Because I'm a rye old-fashioned fan. Um, I like the spicy old-fashioned more than the... The bullet. Yeah, bullet. Or I use Rittenhouse. Um... They're both really good, but I Temple just like the spicy, too. spicy over over the sweet um, mm-hmm. for old fashions. But this works really well in the old fashioned. It's because I think that seven ninety two, seventeen ninety two is a little bit. I'm gonna keep saying that by accident. 
I think it's a little spicier as bourbons go mm-hmm. compared to other ones, but I could be wrong. The amount of bourbons I've had, I've had do not yeah. mean that I am like an expert or anything. I mean, like I'm getting the sp- spiciness from it. For me, it's kind of more similar to a rye um, old fashioned than, you know, like if you use like four roses or, <coughs> or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, and um, it's nice <clears throat> for th- for those who also may not know the ingredients or preparation of an old fashioned. I think it'd be important to kind of go over that. I mean, it's pretty simple. One of the easiest cocktails and most delicious cocktails, I think, in most of our opinions, because <laughs> we drink them a lot. Um, it is a sugar cube or simple sh- syrup um, sure. muddled together. Sh- simple syrup. Simple <laughs> simple syrup uh, muddled together, uh, and you. You can throw like a cherry or an orange peel in there. I usually skip those garnishes because I don't really like cherries. Um, and you can also substitute the orange peel for orange bitters, but you can also, um, it also incorporates um, regular bitters. So, you know, I do like two two splashes of regular bitters, one spa- splash of uh, orange bitters. I cannot talk for some reason. Um, you know, hey, muddle it all together, throw an ice cube in there and top with uh, your, your rye or whiskey or bourbon of choice and you're good to go. And as you make these a lot, you kind of get your own style, I guess. Like, you start Mm -hmm. to know what you like. So, like, I tend to... So, I use Angostura bitters, and I tend to, like, two maximum for Angostura bitters. But I'll use three splashes of uh, orange bitters bitters, um, if if I'm not using an orange. If I'm using an orange, I'll use one, because then that's enough to bring out the orange even more. But... um, I also, when I put the cube in, I do the cube, two splashes of the bitters, and then I'll do a splash of water. Mm -hmm. I prefer it with a small splash of club soda, um, and then muddle it together, whiskey on top of that. Yeah. Um, But I never have club soda, ever. Me neither. But you have... It just goes flat so often, and you don't want to drink like that much of it, because it's not good for anything else. I'm like, I want literally half an ounce, just like, bloop, okay, let me close this up again and let it sit there for a few days mm. before I use it again. So, Alec, you have um, Angostura in yours, right? Correct, yeah. Um, I'm using Peychaud, so... <clears throat> okay. Um, we did a comparison about it, like, on our own before, between, like, mm-hmm. using orange bitters, Angostura bitters, and Peychauds. Yeah, we got pretty drunk that night, if it I remember. Did, yeah. <laughs> but, like, in general, like... Uh, Peychaud's a, is a bit sweeter than Angostura. Angostura is more... Uh-huh. Um, it's fruitier. F- yeah, like floral or, fruity. Uh, well, it's Peychaud, sorry, is yeah. fruitier. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the Angostura is a bit more like floral mm-hmm. than fruity. Um, it's spicier. Spicier. But um, I do have to say that um, for bourbon, I think that Peychaud's kind of helps bring out like the sweetness in an old fashioned, whereas like Angostura like will like kind of help the spiciness. Mm -hmm. So um, if you are like not a big fan of having something too spicy, you may want to use something like 1792 if you're using Angostura bitters. But if you're using a rye, you may get off put by some of the the spice kick that you get from not only the rye whiskey, but also from Angostura bitters. So in that case, like I would highly recommend using Peychaud's or some um, form of other bitters that um, I can't really remember any other bitters unless you off the. Off the <clears> I mean, there's like um, Regan's, Regan's, whatever it is. That's a pretty popular brand of bitters, but I don't know anything about their regular bitters. I use their orange bitters, right? Uh, Re- Regan's, whatever it is, R E G A N S. Reagan's so, yeah it's an old guy with a beard got that That's creepy old picture. man yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> all right the one thing I do remember from our taste test is using orange bitters with Peychaud's can get a little too sweet, too sweet for me yes. at least and it's kind of gave me a headache when I was sli- sipping it um, when he was sleeping yeah I don't when I was I don't sleeping like the, the sweet yeah <laughs> but the orange bitters complements all the way Angostura really well like yeah. orange bitters with Angostura in a rye is really good mm-hmm. um, if you don't mind that extra spicy because the Angostura with rye would be pretty spicy for sure. 
Yeah, but I do prefer <clears throat> the Angostura with a rye. Um, Me too. Just uh, mm -hmm. because it it tends to be too sweet if you're using a bourbon and Peychaud's. Um, anyways, why don't we uh, go ahead and rate this uh, bourbon, 1792. Um, Alec, what do you think? You chose it for this week. Uh, what are your impressions? Um, <clears throat> it's definitely really smooth. For the price point, it just, like... It can't, I don't, off the top of my head of things I know, I can't beat it on something for just flavor, smoothness, uh, 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 drinkability and all that. Um, I like the smell of it too. Um, and then it comes in a pretty cool bottle, like the shape of it. it it's not like your typical cylindrical bottle. It's, it goes out and then like, it's more rectangular and stumpy. And then it's got like a cool gold top, uh, with a cork. Um, it's not a screw on, so that's nice. Um, but all in all, <clears throat> definitely one of my more like favorite bourbons. Um, obviously I'm, uh, I, I guess we've never talked about this. I'm a big scotch guy, but I do like my old fashions and you can't make old fashions with scotch. Um, it's just not very good. Um, but for Please this, don't do that either. <laughs> I probably give this a <laughs> four and a half out of, out of five, I'd say, cool. um, just really good. Yeah. Solid. Nice. Well, uh, I am a big fan of this. Alec is actually the one that introduced me to this initially. He gave it to me as a birthday gift. Um, <laughs> and uh, I do like that for its price point, it's very drinkable. You don't need to do too much. Usually just like, you know, a splash of water and uh, and an ice cube is enough to have it like on the rocks. And um, you get like that bourbon age barrel wood taste along with like the caramel and vanilla notes and it's just really nice to drink um i'm gonna go ahead and yeah i kind of agree with you four and a half this is uh probably like my Man. current favorite bourbon um in this price range it's a solid bourbon yeah. so drew you said you've had it before what based off memory what would you uh what would you rate it at uh, or do you not want to do it's that not my memory? I, I don't think I'll rate it off memory. Um, I can compare it to some of the other bourbons and whiskeys that I've had around that price point. Um, Maker's Mark actually has a pretty good product, and it's a little bit cheaper than this. Um, if you're not willing to spend 30 I think most bottles of Maker's are like $25 now. Um, I found it at BevMo like two weeks ago for $19. Um, so it's gotten like pretty cheap. It's cheaper than Jack Daniels, and Jack Daniels isn't good. Um, <laughs> it's good with Coke. The um, I think like the I think no Pikesville's a rye. Uh, that's the best. That's rye. the best whiskey <clears throat> I've ever had. Um, that's like a single batch um, rye whiskey that is just above and beyond anything. It's a little bit more spendy. It's like about fifty four dollars. Um, but if you're willing to jump up a couple more bucks, um, that's a great rye, particularly for old fashions as well. Um, the bullet is more or bullet, whatever the fuck it's called. That rye is a little bit it's it's about the same as 1792 um, and great for old fashions, too, if you're looking for a rye. But um, I like the Pikesville. I like the bullet, um, which is also in this price range. They make a, a regular whiskey as well as a rye, which is also pretty good. Um, but overall, yeah, like in this price range, the 30 to $40, there's a bunch of good, um, whiskeys that you have available for you. But I think the, uh, 1792 is like a good, I think we say this a lot, but it's like a good beginner, um, bourbon. Um, it's, it's like all, for all the reasons they said, it's not, it's not too spicy, you know, it's smooth. Um, it's got, you know, good flavor profile, easily drinkable, um, all the good stuff. So if you want to try something, you know branching out i know we're usually talking about beer but uh i think we're a connoisseur of all types of liquor and uh alcohol in general so it's a it's a good way to kind of branch out um you know and i recommend drinking it just how you guys did it have it like neat um and then maybe throwing an ice cube and a splash of water and then trying the old-fashioned um, i think that's the the purest experience that you're gonna get uh with this type of liquor cool for sure well, um, now that we've uh, kind of settled in with these drinks, um, why don't we move on to our mm. anime topics? So, anime. 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 We, we do that on this show. Um, 
<clears throat> so <clears throat> why don't we uh, start off this week with a soccer request? Okay. Um, so this week we kind of have the continuation of the festival. They're trying to bring back that Monoyama festival and we're kind of seeing like <clears throat> more, um, excuse me, um, more of this conflict with the whole shopping district and how it's kind of fading out of town and they're kind of trying to find a way to revitalize it. So, um, in particular, they've got a, a like Portuguese style, like pastry shop that wants to open in the, in the shopping district. And it's going to be like kind of maintained by a former Monoyama resident who came by for the closing of the Monoyama second middle school. So Drew, why don't we start off with you? What did you think of this episode? I mean, it was better than last week's, but that's not hard to do. <laughs> um, it was it was good. Um, I I'm liking Chitose's character a little bit better. Um, and the thing that kind of turned it around for me is she's like, you know, it's not good for my business to bring because she does Japanese sweets and, you know, both kind of confectionery goods and things like that. She's like, it's not good for my business, but I'm thinking about the whole of the shopping district and things like that. So that was that was cool to see from her um, a little bit later in the episode, too. We kind of have uh, her and the um, the chief of the uh, tourism board. They kind of make up in their own way, um, which was nice. Um, but, yeah, we we. The I think the big thing to take from this episode is that I think this guy um, who is opening this confectionery shop, he's kind of got some sort of ulterior motive. Um, he takes the chief in the car and is like, just what we talked about, okay? And he's like, let me out, let me out. Um, and so it, it comes to, they come to know that um, I think it's like the next prefecture over, the next town over that's bigger is going to like absorb Monoyama. So we have like two episodes to kind of resolve that conflict. Um, so it'll be interesting to see that. But uh, we also get a little bit of development, um, a little bit of development uh, with Yoshino. Uh, one of the you know merchants straight up asked her, it's like, you're not from this town. <laughs> like, why do you help us so much? And she's like, well, you guys all accepted me and I really appreciate you for that. So that was that was kind of a cool thing to see. Um, I don't know. It was, it was a better episode. Um I think the the idea of turning the old middle school into like a little mini mall or with like little shops and stuff is a really cool idea. Um, and just seeing like that classroom with that the cafe with the bookstore guy um, and Sandal are like renovating it looked like really nice. So it's like I can see that vision kind of coming to life, which was which was also nice. Cool. <clears throat> Yeah, Alex, the uh, scene with uh, Yoshino talking to the people, I think, was probably the the most impactful scene of the episode. But um, what did I think about it? Um, yeah. I liked it. Um, I thought it had a lot of like good moments, kind of like they it, it it was it didn't feel rushed, but they had like so first they're trying to find a they they have the opportunity, then they're trying to find a place for it, and they're like, oh, we know just the guy, and then the guy's like, no, and then it's like, well, why not? And it's like this mystery, and then there's like resolution for it, and then the whole you know the the shopping mall people, I forget what they're called, the tour the board the, the board of merchants, you know what I'm the board of merchants, yeah, um, they kind of like you know band together, and the guy's like, oh, I'm just worried about smell, whereas this guy like had his loan screwed over because the guy just left. Um, but I, I this episode kind of had me think that <clears throat> it, like, so we have all this stuff about the, um, about the, the dragon, you know, and the dragon like gets scares and goes in the cave and dies or whatever, just because they're trying to accept the dragon. And, uh, but then you have Maki and them trying to change the ending or whatever. Cause they're like, that's kind of depressing. And, it just made me think of Yoshino being the dragon and the town accepting her. And instead of driving her into a cave and scaring her, having her die, they're like trying to fit, you know, I don't know the way that they seem like they might change it. It'll kind of reflect the story as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's they were trying to do like some fancy juxtaposition by flashing mm -hmm. back and forth between the two. I'm like, I wish they would just stop with the fucking dragon song and singing and all that stuff. It's like, <laughs> dude, it's not, it's not that good. Well, I mean, it's Rico. part of the, it's part of the story. 
Dude, I mean, don't take away Ruby part Rose's of the story, best part. But I mean, her voice isn't that good. <laughs> it's just That's like the point. cringy. Whenever she starts singing, she gets like this blank look on her face, and she folds her hands, and she's like just singing out to nobody. And you're like, this is really awkward. Like, stop. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we also have to remember that Drew's dead inside, so... Um, <laughs> That's true. He, he may have, uh, you know, skewed opinions on stuff like this. So, <laughs> poor, poor Ririko. Like, poor Ririko. Poor Don't girl, bully her. The poor girl only has one thing going for her, and it's her, <clears throat> like, dwindling numbers on her, her, stu- YouTube, her, stupid song. her YouTube channel for the one song she sings. <laughs> and Drew's just trashing yeah, her. Stupid, her. F- her stupid fox mask like hey she uh, just wants to go travel the world with her friends from mexico okay they were from let her do that so so do it (laughs) don't keep it in my show like get her her, get her out of here get Get her out out of here all right well (laughs) we pretty much summed up what happened in this episode it's kind of like all set up towards the last episodes Mm -hmm. where we will see some sort of conclusion we will probably see Yoshino sticking around past her year term will probably see, you know, the success mm. of the Monoyama Festival. Not. I hope she gives <laughs> up on this town. There'll be some like, sort I just of tricked like... you guys. Th- there's going to be Jesus. some sort of like, oh, I don't know if we can keep her here, blah, blah, blah. And then the town will band together and find something for her. And then they'll be yeah. like, the queen is back. Yeah. And that's that's for sure going to happen. Or... Or opinion. like her, one of her family members will get sick, and she's like, "I got to abandon the town at the last second. And they'll be like, "No, your mom's fine. She's like, she's dying from cancer. She'll be okay. Like, stay with the town and finish the festival. Like, that's what's gonna happen." <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna point out what's probably going to happen, which is so, their Manayama may be absorbed into the greater city of was it To Tonomo Tokyo? No. No. It's like Tonomori or something. <laughs> I forgot the name. Yeah, something like and, that. And um, that is probably going to have to do with her whole Kingdom of Chupacabra and Monoyama Board of Tourism work that possibly she may not even have a job before her year's up. So Oh, they took her job? So there's they that. They took her job! So that's probably where the, the remaining conflict will be. Um, They're going to find a job at her town. Her original town. You never know. Maybe she will. By the sea. And maybe, maybe that will be an opportunity for the rest of the girls to travel outside of Mayama. Except she, or whatever her Shiori. Shiori. She'll never go. Yeah. She'll love she, the town stuck. no matter what. Yeah, she'll stay. She's stuck forever. She'll stay in the one house forever, and she'll never. Erica's leave. gonna stay. She's gonna give up on her dreams. Yeah, she'll give up on her dreams. <laughs> Because her little have bro- because store. her little brother What's ran be- away. It's better than dying <laughs> in Tokyo in winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is so. it? What? No. Said, is not. it? Oh, it's not. It's not. No. Well, <laughs> let's move on. So, uh, why don't we talk about this uh, new episode of Gamers? And uh, as expected, it was a lot of development for Chiaki, although kind of. So in this episode, we kind of have, you know, more interactions between Shiaki and Keita, as well as Shiaki's younger sister, Konoha, who was introduced last episode. And now all of a sudden, Konoha has been has become Shiaki's scapegoat for her Nobe-san and Mono-san um, aliases online. So, Alec, why don't we start with you? What did you think of this episode? Um... I liked the development they gave uh, Chiaki <clears throat> just because it was nice to get away from all the misunderstandings, but it was also funny to see her kind of screw herself over like, like three times in the episode <laughs> yeah. and just thinking like, yeah, that's that's totally like high school, middle school right there where somebody you're like, oh, uh, uh, yeah, let me just like do this and give the complete wrong idea because that's what we do. Um so it was just kind of funny, but she screwed herself over. I actually like the little sister. She's a funny character. Yeah. Like when she was in the <clears throat> in the adult shop or whatever, and it's like, oh, that's why you were buying adult. And then she like steps on his foot and he's like, I mean, that's why I was all alone buying adult video games by myself. <laughs> and then Chiaki's um, like, 
You're gross. Like, you. Yeah, you're gross. Get away from my sister. She's smart and talented and pure. <laughs> and then she's got that face like, uh, yeah, I am. Uh. <laughs> yeah, she's like, uh. Um, but I think my favorite part of the whole episode was when they created the new, uh, like the old but new recreation of the misunderstanding with Urahara, where he just calls Chiaki and she's like, Ur- Ur- Urahara, what, what does that mean? And then she just hangs up and she's like, yeah, he just called me and said something in a really serious tone. He just said, Chiaki, I choose you or something. And I was just like, I don't think he said I choose you, but yeah. was just, it was just like, oh God, of course. Of course he says this in front of Keita. And he and doesn't it's just give like, any context because, you know, sometimes no when you've got so many things going through your head, you forget that that's only something you said in your head. Nobody else. And yeah. so you just <laughs> say something and it's completely out of context. You're like, what? Like, yeah. Oh, you mean fuck. like when we play league? Oh, yeah. When <laughs> we play league and Alex up. says he's going to gank in his head. But he. Yeah, I say it in my head and then I show up and then I die. Nobody helps me. <laughs> and he's like, oh, whoops. Nah, soon. My bad. <laughs> but yeah, so I liked that part of the episode just because I thought it was funny. And you could clearly see that she was like, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's like, so there's going to be some conflict there for her going, oh, well, Urahar likes me, but I like Keita and Urahar. What do I do? And it's going to be, it's going to be dumb. All right. I have a feeling Drew may have a different opinion. So Drew, what did you think? couple different things. Um, First off, before I get into any of the uh, the story things, um, I think I said this earlier, but like, I don't know. I wish this this show is really funny and this show is like really well done and it makes me cringe. Like it makes me cringe to not like it, but I like still always look forward to coming back and watching it. But I wish this studio Pine Jam did not have this uh, this show because I want like a higher budgeted studio to be able to do this because I don't know if you guys were watching the animation quality, but I think 95% of this episode was drawn by like a five-year-old. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there were it was there really, bad. really, really It's bad. a pretty talented <laughs> five-year-old, really dude. I mean, I mean, I it was it wasn't it wasn't good. Um, so that was like kind of turned me off like right off the bat. But in terms of like what happened, um, I was like I I typed this out. And I'm like I hate high schoolers because it's like <laughs> nobody can communicate with each other. Everyone just beats around the bush and it just creates all this cringy <clears throat> conflict that makes me like really upset. It's like Uihara <laughs> calling and saying like I'm I'm going for you or I'm on oh, your team right, yeah. like whatever the fuck he said like <laughs> I choose you. <laughs> like uh i that happened i was just like fuck because like she's got it in her mind that you know he likes tendo and you know and so now it's like bring him back into the triangle rhombus whatever the fuck um that we thought we resolved last week with the board game or whatever so it's like just just fucking everybody sit down in a room i'll mediate it for you i'll be like you what are your questions for this group? You have to say it. And then they'll all hash it, hash it all out. Everybody will, you know, Tendo and Chiaki will fight over uh, Keita and it will be done. And then, you know, and the little sister, fight, you know, she's, she's not a good, she's a minor. She's, she's, she's just here. there because, um, but she's going to have to fight because she wants it. She wants Keita. She don't want it. She, no, she doesn't. Yeah, she does. Uh, she wants he, ma- she wants the smell of maidens. That's what she wants. The fresh scent of maiden. Uh, the, or is it the wants. smell of fresh maiden? I don't remember. <laughs> it's one of those. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. She's <laughs> doesn't matter. she's dumb. Um, she's she's great. She has cute character design. Her character is goofy, but she's a nothing character in terms of what's going on in the bigger picture. How dare you um, say that? The, I I saw I saw the scapegoat <laughs> thing coming too. Like as soon as she woke oh, yeah. up in the bed, I'm like, oh, you know, Convenient. there she is. Like it would have been funnier. It would have been funnier if you know, oh, she was using her PC or whatever, and if like just uh fucking Eroge just pops up when the screen comes on that would have been funnier that would have been funny. but instead she 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 becomes this scapegoat um for chiaki i'm like chiaki girl be honest with yourself you're hot like you just discovered that you're hot like be hot don't be a fucking bitch like accept your feelings don't um don't be like what you said uh when a delinquent helps a little baby cat in the alley and now you all of a sudden like the delinquent like you know don't be like that just accept your feelings bitch <laughs> okay well i mean poor chiki poor chi yeah poor chiki you know she's still a girl Chikey. in high school that probably has self-esteem issues 
regardless of the <clears throat> fact that she like has yeah, she's a neat been, she's basically a neat i guess Who's had her had her coming out or whatever um <laughs> so other than those aspects there's not much to talk about with the rest of the episode it's basically you know chiaki has got like you know to just get a grip of herself like <laughs> she's just not yeah. not letting she, it, I her think, relationship with Keita advance at all I think she has the potential because even when they're outside the combini um she says like oh I turned off my phone because all these guys are hitting me up like she has the ability to like turn that switch and like do that and then fucking Keita just like no you're because of your body you haven't been going out all summer <laughs> She's like, like, I can see how what's that supposed you to are. It's your skin, dude. You're <laughs> pale. <fucking> savage. <laughs> you pale, you're pale, girl. You need some sun. Um, I think she has the ability to flip that switch, but she can't come to terms with it in her in her mind's no, she's eye. She's too busy shutting herself down. Like, her, her own yeah. opportunities where, like, Kate is saying all these things and then she goes, ew, this is gross being around you or whatever. And then, like, well, I like Urahara, you know, and doing that. And it's like, well, you just fucked yourself, like... Five time, five ways to Sunday. Yeah, but six I mean, ways to Sunday. She's been doing it this whole time. It's not. Yeah, like I know. It's gonna, but, yeah. <laughs> it's but now it's like she likes him, and it's just like she uh, got she whatever. got two episodes to figure it out, boys. Two episodes. She won't figure it out, dude. She she's will. gonna she's gonna kill herself. Tendo's wow. gonna win as it should be. <laughs> uh, I mean, ma- like I can see maybe eventually Tendo like winning it. Like, clearly, we'll probably have some sort of anime original ending because, like, this is the type of show that probably doesn't get a second season just because it's a comedy. No, it, it won't. But, yeah. like, I would be interested to see how the light novels do end just because I feel like Tendo is the, you know, main front runner to win, but there's a, probably a very large argument for Chiaki to, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, essentially be seen as the winner, but I don't know. Karen has not had too much character no. development. No. Um, That's what I was going to say, too. Like, because she hasn't, Chiaki. I like Chiaki better yeah. right now. Just because um, there's more to her, more substance. Yeah, she's just more interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm really interested to see what they try and do to help, you know, Karen seem a bit more heroin-like <laughs> in the last the last couple of episodes. But I don't know. We'll see. Um would you guys uh, like her more if um, they didn't do that bullshit with a yes, sergeant, okay, sergeant? Like, would she be more likable for you guys if that wasn't a thing? I don't think that's really, like, a thing that's going to change how I think her character is a little boring. Okay. Yeah, I just I just think she needs more substance, she, like, right now. Like, she yeah. hasn't get, been given very much development. We just know she's this girl who was perfect who has now become slightly less perfect because of Keita. She has a club and she likes video games and she yeah. likes Keita. And that's she's like a very it. eccentric and nice girl. But I think, you know, she just seems a little bit, you know, boring compared to Chiaki. Because Chiaki yeah. seems to have a bit more so depth the, to her personality. Right. Um, so the, the date day wasn't doing it enough for you guys. Um, I thought that was like good development, but going past that, it's like it's a lot of like for me, what you guys said too. Um, I mean, Chiaki, you know, she has like a like you said, a little bit more story. She's like the ugly duckling, realizes she's hot, um, develops games, um, has a quirky personality, um, things like that. So I can see where you're coming from. Um for me, it's a character design thing, but that's nothing new that you've heard from me before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just you know? easier to like Chiaki Blonde. just because, like all those things you said too. Like she, she, then she has the sister with Karen. We know nothing about like behind school and her video game thing. We don't have any kind of depth behind what we just see on the surface with uh, Chiaki. There's just a lot more because, and then she has that older relationship with. Uh, Keita that that he doesn't know about that she knows about and it's like Karen just kind of I don't even really understand her motivations for liking him besides he turned her down when she invited him and so it's just kind of that's what I was uh 
that's what I wanted to like talk about just uh, quickly is like I hope they don't do the cop out thing where like she has a flashback of like them two like playing as like little kids and oh, that's God. why she likes him or something like that. Like I can see them doing that in like the next episode and being like that's why she likes him so much and I think that would be such a cop out. <laughs> like oh my God, please don't do that. I hope. It goes back to more something more recent if they do a flashback, kind of like how the the uh, Chiaki sister was like, oh, this guy's cool when he was talking about that stuff. And it kind of reflected on her or whatever. Like, it, I hope if they do a flashback, it's something more recent to something like that. But I think it's just going to be like her reasons for liking him or he just wants to have fun. And he kind of gave gave her a whole new way to think about enjoying video games and that expand expanded her world or whatever so yeah. she likes him for that and i still think yeah. like that's a reason but it's still not as like it's not a very deep reason there's not much to it it's still a very like flat reason for me compared to why chiaki likes him there's like all this history between them they obviously get along even though they quote unquote hate each other there's just more to it so yeah and mm-hmm. even when they are like ragging in on each other walking back from um, back to her house to get his wallet or whatever. There's clearly like friendly chemistry and more than that there. Yeah. So, and there always was, but. well, they have more in common with each other than, mm-hmm. um, Karen does with a mono too. So that's another that, thing. So that also like the Karen and a mono and a mono thing, like seems a lot more one-sided in terms of like Karen having like this, like obsession with him compared to Mm -hmm. like I feel like Keita probably has the same interest in both of them probably more so with Karen just because you know they're going out and like I'm sure like he you know like legitimately is interested in her because she's like really pretty and like um like plays video games plays video games (laughs) willing to go like go out with him essentially but you know when he buys uh blonde eroge yeah but you know I mean (laughs) He does have that chemistry with Chiaki that has been there since, you know, she's been introduced. So we'll yep, we'll see yep. in the next episodes. So moving on. Bring back the long hair. Um, let's go on to a new game. And uh, in this episode, uh, it was kind of a bully episode. So, Drew, why don't bully. you talk about that? Don't fucking bully Nenechi. Don't. Don't you do it. Don't you do it? Um, that really pissed me off because I actually liked um, the. I always call her like the cat girl. I can't remember her name. Um, one second, I have it written down. Naru. Do, um, Nar- Narume. Uh, Narumi. Um, I I liked her before this, and then she just fucking drills Nanechi like. You know, you've been given all this stuff. And it's like all the net she had to say was like, actually, I wasn't given all this stuff. I worked here for like half a year debugging and testing this game. So you can go fuck yourself. Like I did this in my like spare time as a part timer and I was here a lot and I developed this professional relationship with the lead programmer who sees potential in me. I'm not just, you know, oh, I knew her off the street. We were best buds. Let me uh, get into the company. No, it's not what happened. Um, so stand up for yourself, Nanechi. You are best grill in this fucking show. Um, Hifumi, you know, dude. And now she's now she's now she's driven, and now she's motivated. She's gonna fucking knock this project out of the park, dude. This fucking mini game that doesn't have anything to do with the game. She's gonna knock it out of the park. Hifumi. That marble maze, dude. Yeah, marble I mean, mazes. Yeah, marble maze. I, I kind of surprisingly found myself being a little like <coughs> like put off by Naru. Because I thought she was really cool last episode, and then this episode, Mm -hmm. she kind of got that, you know, jealous spike where she just immediately assumed that because um, Nene had previously worked as a a part-timer and has a, you know, personal relationship with Umiko that she could just kind of trash that and just say that all of um, her work was just due to, like, favoritism. And, I mean, that's, Mm -hmm. like... You have to understand that that's just how the world works sometimes, you know, like sometimes it's like who yeah. you know is the is what gets you is what lands you the job, regardless of whether you have talent or not. 
but in this situation, like Nene actually does have some potential. Like, look, she's only been programming for like what six months at the most. That is not a lot mm-hmm. of time. And she was able to impress Umiko, who's been a programmer for years. And I'm like, I'm yep. sorry. Like, yes, you've been Naru. You've been doing it since what'd she say? Like sixth grade or some shit like that. Middle sixth school. grade or something. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't care. Like if you've been doing it for that long, if you don't have, you know, the relationship with somebody, you may not get a job regardless of how talented you are. So sometimes you have to respect the fact that some people have that connection and that helps them land a job. And just because you don't have that doesn't mean that you can just like put them down and be like, Oh, you're just a piece of shit. Like you, you are worthless and like, don't know what the struggle is. It's like, yeah, maybe she doesn't, but she, you can't just write off all of her, all of her talents just because of well, it's not like Nanette well, is lacking in, either. Like she's yeah. working at it every day, like learning, she's going to school and working at the same time. Like, She's already working harder than yeah. she is. And she's like, oh, well, you just know her. And then she's like trying to be like the lead programmer. Oh, I didn't know she was like that, but I guess so. And like all this shit. It's like you don't even know these people like uh, idiot, idiot freshman in college. Yeah. Uh, and then she got sick and I laughed because like, yeah. ha you deserved it, bitch. I mean, I didn't <laughs> think that go that far, but I did find her character to be a bit um, annoying this episode. <clears throat> Because of her acting like that, I dislike pink haired girl less. Oh yeah. Momo. Momo she was just Yeah. Weird. Momo isn't as annoying anymore as she was like the first episode or even the she's beginning just of weird. the second episode she was there. She's just odd. Yeah. But she has giant boobs, so she does. Yeah. I mean she's got that <laughs> going yeah, for her. Given uh there. given so Hajime a, a run for her money and if Fumi, <laughs> man. All right. Well, uh, but, yeah. Not much to talk <laughs> about no. more on that episode. It was just you know bully Nanechi time, and uh, bully, yeah. bully. Um, I guess she did get Hajime her just and Yoon went to that stupid show. Oh yeah, the show. I forgot that this was the thing that I was saying they left out in a previous episode. I was glad they brought it back. Um, the whole thing where it shows how Hajime looked in in high school. And also mm. how Yoon looked in high school. And so there was like, <laughs> wait, you oh, yeah. like know about like fashion and stuff and like know how to like take care of yourself. And like, yet you still dress up like a, like a tomboy. And it's like, uh, it's like, well, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, <laughs> she's just more comfortable. <laughs> she that cuts way. her own fucking hair. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was the best. I can cut it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Such a fucking slob. Um, but <laughs> I like how she's like, why didn't you say anything like this whole time <laughs> that I've been like trying super hard? And then she's like, yeah. well, I mean, what, like, why would I need to? <laughs> yeah. Why, why do I want to say no, I like, I like your goofy ass style. I like your like, <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those glasses make you look smart. <laughs> payback for the payback they for all- the payback for the payback. <laughs> they all need to wear glasses. Yeah. I'm about it. Well, <laughs> mo- moving on from new game, why don't we briefly talk about Classroom of the Elite? Kind of more introduction to their new desert island situation, which I guess was a bit different than I expected it to be. So, uh, Alec, do you want to kind of mm-hmm. spearhead what happened in this episode? Um, sure, yeah. So they land on the island. <clears throat> they get their equipment. And I guess they have a certain number of points that they can use to spend on things like food, water, other amenities like a toilet. I'm sure that you can probably like get beds or something like that. I don't know. So um, and then there's spots around the island where you get more points if you capture capture them and you keep them for eight hours. And then after eight hours, you have to capture it again. And so they kind of go out looking for spots and they find one by a river they decide what uh fuck what's her name uh i forgot her name suzune suzune yeah is supposed to be the leader and uh of the group because they were going to give it to blonde dude but it's too obvious and they don't want people to guess and get free points off them at the end of the 
end of the mission. Because if you guess the leaders at the end, you get 50 points per correct answer or you lose 50 points for each wrong guess or whatever. But um, what I'm interested by is the uh, class A and class C bald dude and obviously the leader of class C dude. We're like in the forest and he's trying to shake his hand and the other guy's like, oh, get over yourself, whatever. Because Kane eye patch girl is clearly better. Well, I mean, <laughs> clearly. She's got a cane and an eye patch clearly. and a glass of bourbon. So and she probably and she probably board. bought her yeah, she probably brought it to the island or chessboard. Like yeah, they I'm spending her. her classes points on the chessboard, bitches. Like, <laughs> to hold that. Hold that. That's what's happening. Can we talk about so, um Miss the fucking blonde buff dude and how he just fucking <laughs> yes. was Tarzan for like five dude. minutes and then he swam to the fucking boat and said I'm yeah, I'm out. I'm sick later. <laughs> dude, that was the best. It's, when he's it's going beautiful, through the forest. <laughs> I loved uh fucking Iono Koji was like Hey, can you slow down? He's don't worry. In a forest like this, you can't get lost. And then he just fucking swings from tree to tree, like going forward. I'm like, is there going to be some backstory where this guy was raised by like gorillas or something like that? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's why he can't dry himself. He doesn't know what a towel is. Yeah, he's like, no, I never dry myself. I'm dripping with manliness. <laughs> And then he just fucking he's so, he, he's goes, so to the, ridiculous. goes to the boat. He's like hanging off the anchor. And he's like, the moon is so beautiful. Ha 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 ha. And he's just like, what the fuck? I, I'd s- are you so confused about? at why that character exists. Yeah. I think he left because I, he saw something on the island, though. <clears throat> and he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave. No. I yeah. think he's just he's just an, an idiot. idiot. No, nah, he saw something, dude. He saw something. And even, he explored even, the whole island even and I, left. <laughs> <laughs> Even Iona Koji's like uh, to Su- Susan A's like I didn't have the ability to predict like what he was gonna do like and she's like yeah I kind of expected that yeah <laughs> like, he's so fucking ridiculous like he's such an awesome character because he's so fucking ridiculous I just want to know like like what's gonna happen? I want to know what like, he saw what dude his alternative motive like are his alternative motives that I'm beautiful all these other fuckers suck or like is it just he's fucking weird or is it like he has like some sort of motive to do all this stupid shit like i don't know <laughs> it's, it's so fucking so ridiculous fucking weird. I'm a weird dude dude he saw something <laughs> he saw something I'm telling you there's a giant volcano in the center and it's gonna erupt giant big he foot. saw something <laughs> well it was kind of interesting to see um that essentially the the whole group dynamic has shifted a bit. So everyone's a bit more, you know, willing to work together. Like, you know, at first, mm-hmm. like they're all acting like idiots because like the class is full of a bunch of like idiots, but let's have a, yeah. let's have a barbecue yeah. with our points. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, like once, you know, once you talk some sense in the, in the, into these guys, like they, they are willing to work, you know, with one another and like kind of, you know, put aside their pride a bit and, you know, the like EK, like this like fact like realizes like oh i was wrong before i'm sorry like i guess you know like when i was a kid i was complaining about like the bathroom situation too so like i can understand why the girls may like struggle to fucking poop in a box (laughs) and may want a you know a porta potty or something to to use so to shit in well, and he actually he actually sees like his his worth too, because like he has been pretty useless to the class throughout the entire show, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. now he's like, yeah, I went camping a lot. This is what you do, and everyone's like, oh, dude, you're awesome. Like you actually <laughs> knew how to do this, like right on, man. And he's like, yeah, I'm 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 yeah, a cool I'm guy. cool. I'm so cool. You um, can also kind of see that like the the other classes even so class D is supposed to be like the worst or whatever they all have like issues but you can see that like the other classes have their own issues clearly because blue haired bitch got beat up or some shit and then just left there and they're like taking her in and being nice to her which could just be an issue because they're like oh you shouldn't trust people but who knows yeah I think so the I overall like yeah, they should they should have left her no fuck well, that I think the overall <laughs> idea behind it is the higher the higher you go in these class hierarchies, the more hubris they tend to have um, compared to a class like class D where they're told their shit and they're, they've kind of got this like 
you know, their, their own pride and be like, no, we're not shit. We're going to take you guys down. So like, it's going to, mm-hmm. it's kind of, interesting and then it'll to create see. a humbling experience for class A, B and C. Yeah. Like it's kind of interesting to see like whether they can like overcome their faults and t- like basically point out the main flaws with these other classes, which is, you know, essentially that they're Cruelty. looking down on Rape. everybody else <laughs> and they've got their own faults that they probably are not aware of themselves. Yep. Cool. Cruelty. Rape. Uh, well, I mean, we'll see what happens. Yeah, Blonde maybe. guy is going to like swing on back to the Island and like go beat people up or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then and they'll lose a hundred points because he did that. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, he'll be like my leader here. Susan a had the best plan ever. And they're like, okay, well we'd guess that she's the leader and then everybody gets 50 points off them. <laughs> So, uh, why don't we, uh, move on from classroom and quickly talk about Kakigurui. Um, I caught up on that. So Drew, did you watch the most recent episode? Yeah. Um, like we talked about a little bit earlier, um, the, the idol setup, um, the idol girl, um, her game show of craziness uh, was just kind of set up for um she, when uh, yumiko is going to fight the uh, the secretary member of the student council um and it was kind of this episode w- wasn't um as good for me it was kind of boring the game was boring um but it's just it's all set up it's set up for you know what's going to happen um <clears throat> we also saw kind of what's going on with the student council uh president she's at like some crazy japanese like tea ceremony where some shit's gonna go down or something why does it have to be um, japanese dude well because they were all wearing um kimonos mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they were whatever bro it was like super secret traditional japanese place <laughs> um i mean it was i'm, I'm guessing it's her <laughs> i'm just it's her home I'm just kidding bro yeah her parents <laughs> house or something um and they're gonna have a, yeah it was i mean it was a boring episode they're gonna have a very nerve style conversation in a room with just a bunch of oh, talking I, was, boxes. I forgot about that. Yeah, I was. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say too. Because yeah, she's like talking to like screens or boxes. It was totally reminded me of uh, Evangelion. That was. Oh, I forgot about that. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first thing I thought when she opened that door. It's just like, um, are they like going to be talking through these boxes, or like, do they actually mean that their heads are in those boxes? <laughs> this yeah, was yeah. like. This is weird. <laughs> It's like psychopaths or something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did see um, a little bit more character development for uh, Itsuki, um, the girl whose dad is like the game toy publisher or whatever. Oh, yeah, hey. And basically Yumiko's like, you need to pick between joining the student council or supporting me and living up to your expectations and your dreams. Um, so we'll get that resolution next week. Yeah. Should be should be good. Um I liked how the secretary character, though, kind of reads Yumiko because he calls it how exactly pretty much how she is. She's addicted to gambling. She is unpredictable and she is fucking like crazy. Yeah. (laughs) And that's how she gambles. (laughs) And he fucking you knew he was going to win anyway, because he like that whole game is it was poker. But you choose if you have a better hand or a lower hand. Um, The person who bets the most gets to uh, pick that. So every time he would just bet more than her and it's more, it would probably, depending on what he has, it's going to be more than a 50% chance that he picks correctly. So it's a shitty game to kind of play. Uh, the other games, um, in the show have been a lot better. Um, so I hope they announce like a twist to it or something. That would be kind of nice. Well, I think the, the main reason why they had him win that round, like I just like, Oh, she's obviously going to lose like was to, yeah, yeah. it's obviously to coax the, what the fucking chick to come in and give her money Mm -hmm. and like give her a reason to, you know, rise up against the student council. Kind of like with the, the previous debt collection game. Um, yeah. And I think, I think, uh, going along with that, Yumiko has like some sort of bigger plan to kind of, you know, one after the other kind of separate the student council from each other. Um, this would be a big blow to them to get him out. mm -hmm. Um, and then kind of unite the lower classes or like the lower people together to overthrow the student council president. So there's some alternative ulterior motives stuff going on here. Um, but Yumiko's betting a lot. Um, if I were in Itsuki's place, 
I would have said, yeah, let's, like, fuck ambition. Like, I'll be on the student council. I get to inherit my dad's company. I get all this money. Like, that's an easy choice. Boom, done. Like, so she's betting a lot on her pride, pretty much, and her love of nails, which is gross. <laughs> I mean, I I personally think of think of it as she's got higher ambitions, and so she doesn't want to just settle for, you know, and I get that, but it, I mean, it's a sure thing. I mean, I think like a, a normal human being. You are, think you, like some... you are not a good gambler. <laughs> you, Clearly, you know, I like, wouldn't, I wouldn't make it in that school. You would, you would show up in that school and Yumiko would probably actually shoot you with, with the bullet from like one of those guns to be like, you know, what? I loaded this the with li- six lipstick bullet. I, I loaded this with six bullets because you are pissing me off. And then she would just shoot you. <laughs> no i would be like i would be like uh, ryota the stupid idiot guy like that's who i am and then yumiko would be all over me for some reason because i'm a anime protagonist yeah maybe <laughs> maybe in your dreams but um <laughs> <laughs> oh uh mo- moving are you on. saying but are you saying it's not realistic it's not real dreams? dude <laughs> 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 um Damn. Although I bet I bet Yumiko would do some pretty nice ball stomping. Like, yeah, she would fair. probably <laughs> actually crush her nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you'd have to go. You to would never have to worry about kids anymore. Yeah, yeah, he'd be glad about that. Yeah, sounds wonderful. Sounds fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> Stomp my balls. Mo- moving on. So, um, briefly, God. I'm just gonna cover a few news topics. So, this past. Uh, weekend we had the league of legends eu and nalcs regional qualifiers to determine the number three seeds going into the world championship and Mm -hmm. so some pretty interesting results occurred um i'll go over eu first because that was more um ew yeah it it was more ew it it was more predictable (laughs) you could say so it initially started off with h2k versus splice um, this was the most, I guess, surprising part of it because a lot of people thought Splice would um, be essentially be the one going to Worlds. And so they got um, <clears throat> beaten by H2K, who had been looking very poor recently. And then H2K beat Unicorns of Love um, on Saturday. What a name. You will. And, you will. Um, yeah, dude. and then they lost to Fnatic. So... Once again, Fnatic going to the World Championship. Um, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty common. Pretty common, <laughs> but I feel like their current roster isn't as strong as previous World's rosters they've had. I um, mean, when it was like Xpeke Reckles. Yeah. I know it's Reckless, <laughs> but, but I call them Reckles. I Reckles. I, I like <clears throat> Reckles better. It sounds great. It does. Reckles. <laughs> yeah. It. I. There's a lot of. Uh, uh, there, there are a lot of weaknesses in that squad, but I wouldn't call. I wouldn't like say that they're for sure out. They're like mm-hmm. EU as a region itself seems to be a bit lower um, this year. They've just, been pretty weak, just because um, I feel like part of it is that they're not like they've got a big issue with scrimming and the teams don't tend to take scrim seriously. So they're not going to um, get as much out of practice as other regions are. So that's starting to impact them negatively. But I would say that any of those three teams, um, G2 misfits or Fnatic, could get out of groups for sure. Like they're not bad. They're just uh, not living up to I guess the previous expectations that we've had from EU teams previously. Um, well, didn't that is this is this a different region like CIS and EU? Are they different regions? Yes. I remember like last year that that one like Romanian team like came out of nowhere and was like stomping on people. Yeah, CIS is is different because mainly because of um, the EU's block of you know immigration, <laughs> essentially. Got it. And so because Got the it. EU LCS studios are in Berlin. Um, they, they essentially like kicked out like Russia and like, you know, a bunch of other places like Turkey. Yeah. And it's, all it's similar for, it's similar for Dota. Yeah. So, uh, they got to compete in their own regions, but they do have representatives, um, 
at Worlds uh, and Wildcard. So like this uh, Fnatic, um, the third place NA team, which I'll talk about um, soon, the third place Chinese team, um, uh, they're all going to be playing at and a bunch of wild cards. They're going to be playing in this play in stage. So it, they're going to have like a small group stage and then um, a bracket. And then the top, I think, four teams from that will qualify for the actual group stage of worlds. And then there will be the typical like group stage and then quarterfinals, semifinals, finals. So it'll be pretty interesting to see some of these third place teams from the, I guess you would say the higher regions play against these wild card regions that have kind of been emerging recently. I mean, a wild card got out of groups last year. Then again, they were in a group with NA and EU. So um, it's not that surprising. <laughs> um, yeah. So the NA team that got third place, what a surprise, Cloud9. Um, not a surprise at all. Not a surprise at all. But although I did kind <clears throat> of expect Dignitas to pull it through and at least get to the finals and play against Cloud9, maybe. No, they got stomped on. Qualify it, but no, they got 3 0'd by FlyQuest, a team that almost got relegated <laughs> this um, <laughs> split. So the yeah. fourth place team from the <clears throat> summer split got beat out 3 0 in the regional qualifier by. It's the team that got, I think, seventh. <laughs> so uh -huh. um, it was like seventh or eighth. I don't know. It, it was. Who got yeah. first and second? TSM and. Uh, and Immortals. Mm -hmm. So. Immortals. So number one seed is TSM. Number two seed is Immortals. Number three is Cloud9. Um, mm -hmm. FlyQuest ended up beating Dignitas first day. Then they lost to CLG yesterday on Saturday. And then. Three to one. Yes. Today. Um, Cloud9 131 versus CLG. It was uh, mm -hmm. it looked like a pretty evenly contested series from games 2 on, but <clears throat> CLG just couldn't pull it out. Maybe people had too much faith in them or something. Usually they do better when no one believes in them. <laughs> um <laughs> Well, it's cuz Grimmy sure. Grimmy Bear is on CLG and he murdered all those cats, so. Mm. Is he a CLG streamer? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well. Yep. Okay. <laughs> There it That's is. Why? Apparently, bad so. luck cats. That's why. Um, it'll be interesting to don't, see. Don't murder cats. To see Cloud Nine and Fnatic, um, and World Elite and the mm -hmm. likes of them play against some of these teams because honestly, like, as much as people like to make fun of regions like Brazil and stuff, like they could probably, like, take a game or two off of some of these other regions. So mm -hmm. we'll find out who the four teams out of there that qualify for the group stage. Um, formal, so that'll be interesting. The group draw well, is coming soon for that playing. Well, that'll be that'll be interesting, but then Faker's team will win again, and that's what'll well, happen. Well, the interesting thing about that is SKT uh, was doing very poorly at the end of Summer Split, and then they just turned it on in playoffs. Ended up losing the the LCK Summer Finals, so Longju is the number one seed, and SKT is the number two seed based off of points, but. KT, who had been dominating for like two splits, isn't going to Worlds because all they had to do was no, they true. had to win. They had to beat, I think, SKT in the last week of the se season and they would have qualified for points. Didn't do that. They had to beat SKT in the playoffs. <laughs> they didn't do that. Um, SKT had to win against Longju in the finals. SKT didn't beat Longju. <laughs> And then their fourth <laughs> chance was just winning the gauntlet, and they lost to Samsung in the gauntlet. So uh, KT officially cucked for the whole. Uh, yeah, they they. It sounds him. like they choked. It sounds like KT is uh, a bunch of um, chokers. I guess so, but it's really sad because that team was really good, and it would have been you know cool to see them. Clearly play not that worlds, good, but. Uh, I mean, it's a team full of people that have like won worlds or have world before. experience before. So mm -hmm. that's what makes it interesting. Um, GG. Quickly, um, Destiny 2 launched this last week. And uh, I guess it's been having some hiccups with server issues. And especially on PS4 Pro, a lot of people have been getting kicked out or 
having glitches where the game kind of freezes and crashes. So um, that's kind of interesting to hear. I know my sister personally <laughs> is playing it on PS4 Pro and has been complaining about her getting kicked out of a mission that she had been doing for the past hour or like some shit like that. And just like, well, glad I'm not playing that. Um, <laughs> Should have waited for PC. Master hopefully, race. Hopefully the PC version doesn't um, disappoint. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like a lot of these issues just have to do with console and being a massively multiplayer game online. So, mm-hmm. yep. Yep. That's just an uh, MMORPG FPS. Yeah, essentially an MMO FPS. Don't, don't do that on console. Um, don't do that on console. Don't, don't be like that. Well, I mean, they make a lot of money. That's why they made a second one. Yeah. Um, yeah. ReZero has a new OVA coming out. I'm sure Woo. Um, we'll be watching that, right? And then yeah, I think it's out. Is it out? I think it's out because I've seen gifts from it. Oh, okay. Um, I just saw like there was like a thing from yesterday that said it was coming out. And then yeah. Koi no Kitachi, aka a silent voice. That movie has been officially qualified <clears throat> to be a nominee for the Oscars. So if it does get nominated, which I actually think it will. It's uh, it's probably going to do well, I think. Um, so yeah, it made a ton of money. Yeah, it made a ton of money. I still have yet to see it, but I know the story because I read it. Um, I read the manga, mm-hmm. so I hope um, it does well. I hope it does get into the Oscars, and then um, I will eventually watch it. It's got to fight fight against the mouse. Yeah, Disney. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if uh, it'll be able to go up against the likes of you know Pixar, Disney films, but who knows? Mm-hmm. I bet. I bet if Ghibli did it, like it would have more consideration. But because it's not a Studio Ghibli film, it probably won't. Yeah, I mean, it also just has the stigma stigma of being Japanese animation and not a uh, yeah. uh, Ghibli. Isn't yeah. Ghibli Disney, anyways? Ghibli is owned. They get like bought out. Yeah. Yes. So either way, if it is Ghibli, it wouldn't be going up against the mouse. <laughs> it would be the mouse. Well, no. Like what I what I'm saying is like <laughs> um, when people think of high quality Japanese animation in movies, they think Ghibli. They don't think some random studio who decided to do it. Like say like Mappa did it. <laughs> like <laughs> they'd be like, what? Yeah. Well, I mean, they do. Anyway. It is like a film done by. Kyoto Animation, so it's still like yeah. a pretty well-known studio, but who knows? We'll see. Um, it, it did get some critical acclaim. So what is this? Yeah. I see it says Burbs B-Day. It's Kotori's birthday tomorrow. Oh. No, I think it's the oh 12th. I was really confused because you didn't type that correctly. You didn't see B-I-R-B. <laughs> um, yeah, I typed yeah, it wrong. You did. <laughs> The U is right. The U is right next to the I. <laughs> so I. <laughs> I just didn't change. So it. Katori's birthday is tomorrow, on the eleventh of September, and Drew is excited for it. No, I think it's the twelfth, okay. but it'll come out like the step up. The step up is going to come out tomorrow. Well, it'll come out tomorrow. And I'm not like going to get anything. Um, you're yeah, going to be asleep. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get anything. And Drew saved no. up all of his love gems to scout for her, and it's not going to get anything. So, he won't get her. I'm not going to get anything. Literally going to get nothing. Yeah. So so look forward to it. <laughs> Other than that, <laughs> is was there anything else you guys wanted to talk about this week? Um, yeah, I there's one thing. It's the third episode of The Ancient Magus's Bride is was released yesterday on the 9th. Um, so if anybody's following that show and watching it, be happy because the third episode's out. So the movie's coming soon. <laughs> nice. That's it. All right. Well... Movie. Um, I think that wraps it up for us this week. Um, it has been fun. Twenty three episodes. I think. Um, I think we're not recording next week either because I'm gonna be gone. Okay, Drew's gonna be gone. So, so yeah, because he'll be on your cruise. Oh, he'll be on his cruise. We, yeah. Alec, and I can figure out what we'll do. Yeah, maybe we'll do like something yeah. about something else or something to fill yeah. the week. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll, be, we'll we'll just talk about Drew for a whole week and then. <laughs> Maybe we'll binge yeah, how much what we haven't me. watched on Sakurada Reset and then talk about like 12 episodes. Oh, oh yeah. We still have like a, 
I've like not caught up on that. Um, I'm not caught up at all. It would take me like a week to catch up on it. Yeah, I mean, we could do yeah. something maybe. Catch up on Monogatari, you bitches. We could probably do something on shows 86 that episodes. we don't normally talk about, you know. Yeah, we could do watching. something about old shows. We'll figure it out. Anyways. Be excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has been <laughs> fun this week. If you would like to listen to us <clears throat> on iTunes, we are Anime on Draft. We are also on SoundCloud. Just look up Anime on Draft. And on YouTube, we are Anime on Draft. If you would like to Woo! tweet at us, our handle on Twitter is at Anime on Draft. And as always, you can find everything that I just mentioned at our WordPress site, AnimeOnDraft.wordpress.com. Well, that's the been it for this way. week. Uh, last words before we go. Thank Next you, show everybody. I'll be drinking. Oh. Ooh. We'll get, we need to get a 10% alcohol by volume oh uh, drink for the next time. Then we have to <laughs> do it on a Saturday. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pick, I'll pick yep. a good one. <laughs> pick a, pick yeah, a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. That's it. Bye. <laughs> All right. Later, Happy birthday. Everybody.